welcome to the show. The 45th anniversary show of Once Upon a Christmas Cheery in the Lab of Shaka Shiri. 45 years, wow. Some of you weren't even born when we started in December of 1970. But we are here to celebrate creativity in science and in the arts. And we are joined by the varsity band from the University of Wisconsin in Madison and the director, Professor Michael Lacrone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Very happy to have oh, you here. We're, we're delighted to be we here. We're happy to have you here because science is fun. Two, three, it's joyful. four. Are you ready to have fun? Yeah. Are you ready to learn? Yeah. Well, let's get started then, because in my lab, we always obey the safety rules. And the first one, of course, is to have eye protection. I have my goggles on. Everyone sees that I'm putting them on. And I'm going to take this flask that has some hot boiling water in it and put it in this empty dish pan and see what happens now. We see a little condensed water vapor coming off the top and then I'm going to take this bucket of dry ice and dump it right in there. <laughs> I'm still here. So we have some tall glass cylinders right here with colored liquids in them. I'm going to take some dry ice and put the dry ice in the cylinders, just like that. Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. It changes from being a solid to a gas directly without melting. We call that process sublimation. You see some bubbles right now? Those are carbon dioxide bubbles coming from the sublimation of dry ice. We can't see the carbon dioxide gas itself because it is colorless, it's invisible. But it is happening right here because, we can see it right here because we have the gas mixing with liquid. And you see the color changes happened because the acid base indicators that we put in there are sensitive to changes in the acidity or the basicity of the liquids. The colors that we saw at the beginning are the colors when the liquids are basic. And the colors that we see in the cylinders where I put the dry ice are the colors of the acid base indicators when they are uh, acidic. Over the years, we've enjoyed doing many, many experiments in my lab. These experiments have been done not only by myself, but other guests that we've had. And I want to show you now a couple of slides that you can look at of a young girl who was in my show way back in 1992. And she was in the show several times, actually, back in 2002. And so at this time, I really would like you to watch the experiments that I'm going to do. Actually, she's going to come out and do it. She's going to come out and do those experiments. And that's my daughter, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, are you ready? Hi, sweetie. Welcome again. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's been I'm a happy long time. That you're, I'm happy that you're here. It's, Me too. It's a very special occasion. Yeah, happy anniversary. Thank you, thank you. Do you are you ready to do some experiments? I am. I'm going to put on my safety goggles of first, course. though. Of course. It's been a long time since I've worn a pair of these. They look okay? They'll look great. Okay. <laughs> so I think I'm going to start out playing with some bubbles, because this was always my favorite experiment. I'm just gonna blow a few test bubbles here and make sure it works for everyone. You guys tell me if these look okay. Good enough? 
All right. I love playing with bubbles. Me too. Yeah. They're fun. But I love playing with bubbles and dry ice. All right. So I'm going to take some dry ice, which I see you have right here. Yes, in this bucket, yeah. And I'm going to dump the dry ice in this bucket into this some fish. Some of it, anyway. Well, yeah, some okay. of it. I won't do the whole thing. Into this fish tank here. Right, I'll stop there. And the dry ice is subliming, changing into... It is. It's changing into carbon dioxide. Which is invisible, but we see right. something there. But yeah. we can tell it's there. We can tell it's there? How can Do you we... know how we can tell? No, you tell me. I'm going to pull my bubbles back out here. Uh -huh. Playing with bubbles again. Do you guys see what happens there? So bubbles is floating. It's floating on the carbon dioxide gas coming from the sublimation reaction. What if you blow the soap bubbles outside? I'll do it over here so we can test. Let's try that again. They float down, but this but one inside, float. yeah. You want to try blowing gently again and see what happens? Sure. <laughs> That's pretty cool, Elizabeth. I think so, too. Yeah, I like that. I like this experiment. Thank you. So I have one more experiment that I want to do here, and this is another one of my favorites. And I'm going to take this two-liter soda bottle and what looks like a desiccated tea bag here. I'm going to drop it in. Should I just drop it in? When you're ready. OK. You guys ready? All right. Whoa. It looks like you let the genie out of the bottle, Elizabeth. I did. <laughs> what do we always do in science, Elizabeth? I think we need to repeat the experiment. Repeat the experiment, yes, yes. <laughs> so let's do this one more time. So Elizabeth, uh, what, what was the liquid that was in there? So we had some hydrogen peroxide, and we added a catalyst to it. So we uh, saw the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. And that, that was 30% uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide, not the variety you get in the drugstore. No, not that, the that's stuff. That's 3%. Right. Yeah. And so the catalyst then speeds up the decomposition of the uh, hydrogen peroxide, breaks it down into water vapor and into oxygen gas. Exactly. Elizabeth, always great to see you, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you Happy for coming. Happy anniversary Thank again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> my next experiment will be done with these beakers that you see between my two hands here. But I need a student to come and help me with this experiment. Is there, is there somebody that can ready to help me? Hello, Bucky. Welcome, Bucky. Very happy to see you, Bucky. And very happy to see your goggles on. You see, Bu Bucky obeys the safety rules. And Bucky, I see that you have a pin right here. It says, of course, science is fun. I'm glad you, you agree. Bucky, yes. <laughs> Bucky, you're a very good student. I know that. And, and how long is it going to take you to graduate, Bucky? Four years. Everyone should try to graduate in four years. That's very, very important that you do that. Bucky, I'm, I'm going to do in this experiment right over here, and I'm going to take the clear and colorless liquids that are in the back row, in the beaker's back row here, and mix them with the ones in the front row. And what I want to do is I'm going to, well, let's see what happens. All right, here we go. I'm going to count as I mix them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, I said, seven. <laughs> Did I mess up the count? Let's go ahead. So six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, five six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's very good, very good. I'm glad you like this, Bucky. This is, this is like a silent clock reaction, the silent alarm. The alarm comes on because of the color changes, and if I didn't change my cadence as I did, then uh, and all the amounts of the liquids were uh, properly measured and carefully uh, prepared, then the color change would have occurred at the very same count. But there are better ways to keep track of time, right? We use a time device, we use a watch, we use, we use a clock. Well, uh, Bucky, I have another experiment I like to do with these colorful uh, beakers. Uh, they have colored liquids in them, actually, and I have a glass rod here. I'm gonna try to see if I can make some Dr. Shakashiri, Dr. Shakashiri, wait, wait, wait. That, that's my experiment. That's your experiment. Yeah, I was in the lab and I was kind of yes. playing around with them and uh, I tried to, tried to play a song. Right, how's it go again? Let's see here. Nope. Mm. Oh, close. I kind of recognize it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's our song. That's our song. Oh, Two, ready, it, ready oh. and. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Michael Lactrone and the University of Wisconsin Varsity Band, right here, right here. Mike, I wonder, would you like to join me in doing some experiments over here? I would love to help All you. All right, what's your favorite color, Wait Mike? Wait a minute, I had some goggles. Yeah, we have goggles for you. Oh yeah, well, you taught that to me. I've We've got to have goggles. goggles. We've got goggles. He taught me well. <laughs> Now you're ready to do the experiment. Now I'm ready. What's your favorite color, Mike? 
<laughs> well, you really have to ask that question, particularly after yesterday. We, we have some green colored liquids in those speakers. Green is all right. Green is green okay. Green is okay. Well, well, let's see what you can do if you can mix some of these liquids that are behind the green colored beakers. See what happens. If you just add that one over there, see what in happens. Here? No, this one this here. This one right here. Yeah. Dump it all in. There you go. Not bad. That's pretty nice, right? So how about try this one, the next one? Oh, purple. I like that. How about the next one? Uh -huh. That's there. more like there it. There you go. Very nice, very nice. Well, uh, we have a another uh, set of three beakers right here, and we have a clear and colorless liquid back here. How about if you dump half of this amount right into this beaker right here? Let's see what happens. A little more. 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 I'm a musician, not a chemist. <laughs> You're an outstanding musician. <laughs> How about dumping, dumping some in here? Rest of it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh. All right. Okay. Wonderful. Now, how about taking this clear and colorless liquid and adding it to the last beaker we have over there? Oh. I like that. Too. Very colorful transformations, Professor Lacrone. Thank you. You're, a, you're an outstanding musician, and you're a good student of chemistry, especially as you remembered the goggles, uh, <laughs> especially as you. Thank you very much, Mike. My pleasure. Thank you, and the band. Will you, will you stay and we'll join stay, us later? We'll stay and play a little bit more for you later. Thank you very much. Thank you. At uh, this time, I'd like to invite my longtime friend and collaborator to join us for this special anniversary program. Please welcome Dr. Rodney Schreiner. Hi, Rod. Hello, Sam. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here at this 45th anniversary. And you know, we chemists frequently celebrate anniversaries with an element that has an atomic number that corresponds to the anniversary. Do you know the element that corresponds to atomic number 45? Rhodium. That's right. It's the element rhodium. Now, rhodium is like platinum, a very rare and very expensive metal. How expensive? Uh, about $1,200 an ounce. That's expensive. Yes, yes. It's right up there with gold and platinum. So instead of a sample of rhodium, I brought you a picture of compounds of rhodium. Oh, that's beautiful. And as you can see, different compounds are different colors. Rhodium is a very colorful element. And, it sure is. And we all like colors, don't well, we? Thank you so much, Rod. This is very, very artistic and very thoughtful of you. Thank you. Thank you very my, much. I my pleasure. That. My thank pleasure. You. I get to keep this. You have that. Yes, okay. that's yours. You know, I've been doing some experiments in the lab, too. Nothing to do with rhodium. I've been working with foams. Foams. Foams, yes. All right. You all know what a foam is, don't you? What is a foam? It's little bubbles of gas surrounded by something else, either a liquid or a solid. And I want to show you a foam. Now, many foams you uh, encounter every day. In fact, some of you may even make some of them at home. Uh, a cake is a foam. Little bubbles of gas surrounded by a solid, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I have two liquids which I am going to combine in this container in my attempt to make a foam. And you can see, I hope, that it's a rather syrupy liquid, kind of thick, almost like honey, but not quite the same color as honey. It's sort of reddish. OK, now I'm going to pour another liquid into that one. And uh, I'm going to try, by this combination, to make some bubbles. So this one is also kind of syrupy. And now I'm going to stir. 
Let me move this over a little bit, and I'm going to put it down here and stir. Now, if you've ever made uh, mixed vinegar and baking soda at home, you know that you get gas bubbles from that. Well, I'm kind of hoping to get some gas bubbles from this, too. So I'm going to mix them together thoroughly, and then I'm going to pour it into here. Whoa! What is this foam, Rod? Well, this foam is polyurethane foam. And uh, as the uh, mixture gets cool, it becomes stiff. This polyurethane is often used in boats and in uh, life jackets to uh, make things float because it has gas trapped inside the solid, makes it very uh, less dense than water, and so it floats. It's quite rigid. And it will get very rigid. It's still a little squishy. Is it safe to, to touch? Uh, not yet. We'll wait for it to cure. All right. That's really cool, Rod. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rodney. You know, in my lab, we, uh, we have a lot of uh, different experiments. We have different people coming to my lab. Uh, you never know who shows up in the lab. <laughs> Rocket Man. <laughs> oh, it's Professor Spratt from the Wonders of Physics. Hello, Clint. Happy to see you, Clint. Hi, Bassam, and hi, Rodney. Uh, you know, I was out riding on my rocket cycle, and someone said you were doing some science demonstrations here, and I didn't want to miss that. So I came over just to see what you were up to. We're happy you're here, Clint. Well, it's always fun to be uh, with you, uh, Bassam. Now, you know, the rocket cycle is very nice because it illustrates some principles of chemistry and also physics. Uh, I use these carbon dioxide fire extinguishers, and I know you know a lot about carbon dioxide. And uh, normally we use it to put out fires, but we can do lots of different things with it. And so carbon dioxide, of course, is a chemical, but the principle here is Newton's third law of motion, which is an important principle of physics. When uh, a rocket works by shooting something out one direction, and then the rocket goes the other direction. So if I take this fire extinguisher, <laughs> it makes a blast that comes out. Now, I see you have this rotating platform. Could I use this? Yes, yes, let me get it for you. There we go, we'll set it. You know, normally rockets just go straight forward, right? That's the idea, or maybe they go up in the air. But uh, I can actually stand on this platform with this, uh, fire extinguisher, and let's see if I can make myself go around. Oh, I'm going around already. The floor <laughs> must not be level. Now, you notice an interesting thing. When I'm going around, how do I stop? Oh, the other way. Good idea. This is actually an illustration of Newton's first law of motion. Uh, an object in motion will continue in motion until it's acted upon by a force. And here's the force. So let's try it the other way. And I can stop. <laughs> you know, physics and chemistry have a lot in common. And I want to congratulate Bassam Shakasheri for doing this for 45 years. And that's really amazing. Thank you, Chris. And then you know that Professor Sprout has his own Wonders of Physics program. And the next February, he will be celebrating his 32nd anniversary doing it. Congratulations to you, Clint. Thank you so much for stopping by. My pleasure. You've been a fabulous audience. You've come here, and you have shared the joy of science with me as I have shared it with you. The creativity that the youngsters have, the adults have, all of us are committed to doing good in society. And that's why I want to thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart. And I ask you to watch this last experiment I'm going to do here.
and invite I want to invite everyone who was on the show to join me and you give everybody a very warm round of applause. Come on, Bucky.